What up, what up, what up, what up, what up, y'all, man? Welcome to another late night quiet storm edition of Swag Talk, the show we cover the swag inside and out. I'm your tour guide around the swag, see what else coming at you. And we're going to recap these two semifinal games that took place today. We now know the participants in the championship game tomorrow. And there's a lot on the line. We're going to talk about it a little bit after this, after these recaps. Um, and we'll be here. Um, I'm going to be live during the game tomorrow. So y'all make sure y'all lock in with me tomorrow. Uh, I'm going to try to go the whole game. But I'm definitely going to be live during the game. So y'all keep it locked in with me. Um, put the game on one, on one screen. Pull me up on your phone. And let's rock, let's rock this thing out tomorrow. So definitely getting hyped up for the Swag Championship, man. I, this weekend has been great. Um, one game was a great game. The other game was not. We'll start off with the game that wasn't. Um, but Thune Cookman never showed up in this game against Gramlin. Um, losing 65-53. Um, Gramlin led this game 44-19 to at the half, so it was never close. I mean, you know, it was, it was – I guess you could say it was close at the start, but Bethune-Cookman, you know, whether it's the fact that they, you know, they they feel like they, you know, they shouldn't have had to play um, on, on, short, on short rest, but that's the way the bracket falls. Um, they just never, you know, the, the magic they had last night, they did not have tonight, tonight or this afternoon, however you want to put it. And it cost them, you know, they, they just could not get it done. Um, offensively, they only shot 28% from the field, 17 of 58, four of 15 from three for 26%, um, 93% from the line, uh, 15 of 16. But other than that, nothing really doing, um, only, um, uh, uh, Carter Hollinger had uh, 15 points off the bench. Um, he also had five rebounds, and um, Jacoby Hetty had 17 points to lead all to lead the to lead the team in scoring. He also led the team with nine rebounds. Um, Deshaun Dyson only two points on the night, one of 15 from the field, 0 for five from three. Did not attempt a free throw. Uh, Zion Harmon also two points or three points off the bench. He was one of six from the field, one of four from three. Again, no free throws for him. Um, you know, he 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 played limited minutes um, because injury. Um, but this team just did not have it today. They that everything that they did right yesterday, they did wrong today. Like I said, when your when your top guys, you know, two of your three leading scorers don't score, but a combined five points, you're not gonna beat a lot of teams, and you're definitely not gonna beat a Gremlin team. Who came into this game very focused? I think they, um, they never let up. They, they never, you know, they never gave Bethune Cookman anything, anything at all. Uh, Tremichael Moten, huge game. Um, definitely made a lot of big shots um, in in the first half. Well, he he got so hot. I was like, they need to put three hands in his face um, because he just was un. He was unstoppable at that point. Um, and when a guy is like that, it's tough to beat them. You know, they they are a tough team to beat as it is. But when they have a guy who is, is that hot, um, you're just not going to do much with him. Moten finished with 28 points on the night, uh, 9 of 15 from the field, 6 of 7 from 3, 2 of 4 from the line. He also has six rebounds, um, which is something he does very well from his guard position. Um, also had three assists and two steals on the night. Um, really, really good game for him. Um, Dozier also chipped in 12 points, um, for, for the Tigers. Um, and they, you know, they didn't have their best game offensively really, um, as a team, but they, they did, they did it. Um, they did it like they always do with, with, you know, what kind of team play. Uh, Moden obviously was the the hot hand today. Um, Groundless shot forty one percent from the field, forty six percent from three, fifty eight percent from the line, and they were able to just really control this game. You know, like they they did. When you look at what a number one seed is, um, that's what this team is playing like right now. They are 
getting out there and they're taking care of business against whoever the opponent is. Um, they're not really giving you much to, you know, much to get comfortable with. And, you know, they, they made it so Bethune Cookman could not ever get in any kind of a rhythm. Um, they were more physical than them. They played faster. They played smarter. They played cleaner. They played to win, and they did, and they they earned another trip to the SWAG championship game, um, looking for their first berth into the uh, NCAA tournament. So um, we'll talk about their opponent um, in one second. Final, our second semifinal saw Texas Southern take on Alabama A&M, and this game was quite a crazy game. Um, A&M. They are probably the scrappiest team in in this in this conference and in the tournament. Um, Texas Southern jumped out to a, a, a big double digit lead early in this game, and it looked like they were going to run away with it. A uh, and M had a 10-0 run that got them back into the game. Um, they did this multiple times, um, making big runs and to keep themselves in the game and and just not you know not losing focus on what's what's the task at hand. Um, Took a late lead um, off of a Lorenzo Downey three-pointer, um, but TSU responded, uh, made the plays at the end that they needed to get the win, and they advanced to face Gremlin in the SWAG Championship rematch of last season's game. So um, A&M, like I said, this team does not quit. If, if you get up on them, they are going to battle and fight and get themselves back in the game some kind of way. Like I said, offensively, they're not the best team in the in the world, but they just find ways to make things happen. They finished the night shooting 36%, which if you looked at those numbers, you would think they, looking at the numbers for this game, you would have thought they really had got ran out of the gym. 36% from the field, 23 from three, and 75% from the free throw line. But they still made it, you know, they still found ways to make things happen. They finished with 36 rebounds. Uh, they had nine assists, 13 turnovers, six blocks, and five steals. They were led by uh, Lorenzo Downey with 17 points. Uh, Omari Peak had 10 points. Uh, Chad Moody had 10 points. And Jalen Randall um, had 11 points. Um, Randall and Moody had 21 points combined off the bench. Um, Blackwell gave them some solid minutes. Um, he didn't really score, but gave them some solid minutes. Um, Everybody just found ways to make things happen. You know, they made the shots that they needed to when they needed to. Um, and they they kept TSU off balance uh, once TSU went up. Uh, the thing that I'm looking looking at about TSU, though, is uh, P.J. Henry. Uh, what, what's his health status going to be like? Uh, he rolled his ankle um, in the, late in the first half. Um, I don't think he played much in the second half. Uh, he finished the night playing 19 minutes. So. Didn't really get a lot of time um, after that. So let's see, you know, I'm quite sure if he's able to go, he's going to go um, in a game like this. But, you know, that's something that you want to keep an eye out on. Um, uh, um, Stroud finished with 17 points. CC finished with 18 points. Um, six or 17 from the field, one or four from three, five or eight from the line. He also had two rebound, three rebounds. Uh, Stroud had six rebounds. Hunter had six rebounds um, to lead the Tigers. Uh, they got four guys in double figures as well. Uh, PJ Henry finished with 12 points, and uh, White Singer finished with 11 off the bench. Um, other than that, it was just kind of a helter skelter game, and those are the kind of games that play into AM's hands. Uh, TSU ended up shooting 43% from the field, 31 from three, and 80% from the line. Uh, they had 32 rebounds. Uh, 10 assists, nine turnovers, three blocks, and six steals. Um, like I said, this was probably the obviously this, this was the best game of the men's semifinals um, since the other game was uh, uh, basically a blowout. Um, this one looked like it was going that way, but A and M continued to fight and scratch and get themselves back on track um, and pull out a dub. Tech Southern was able to pull out a dub after AM fought and scratched and clawed and got themselves back in the game, which is the same thing they did against Alcorn um, in the opening round. So now we know who our who our uh, opponents are in this championship game. It should be a great game. These two teams split the season series um, by a combined, I think, the margin 
was like four points or something like that combined between the two games. So these are TSU, Gramlin. This is going to be a very good game. Uh, winner take all. Uh, Gramlin looking for that first SWAC championship uh, tournament win. And uh, TSU looking to win four in a row. So somebody's going to make history one way or the other. So this is going to be a great game. And like I said, I'm going I'm to be here live during the game. So y'all keep it locked here. Um, other than that, man, I'm not going to stay on too much longer, man. Like I said, this game took a lot out of me. So I'm going to go ahead and get on up out of here and get rested up for tomorrow. And like I said, we'll be back live tomorrow about 8.30 um, Central Time. Might, might be a few minutes before tip-off, but going to try to be be here about 8.30, 8.25. So y'all keep it locked with me. Uh, put the game on the big screen. Put the, put put me on your phone. And let's make it happen. So with that being said, man, I'm a tour guide around the Swag Sea Well signing out. And I'm going to catch y'all on the rebound. Peace.